Hello, folks. It's James Hill with ABC7 here in Sarasota. We are joined by a special gentleman. He is actually the president of the local branch of the NAACP when you look at Sarasota County. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, his name is Mr. Trevor Harvey. And sir, uh, how are you today? I'm doing well, James. How are you? Pretty good, sir. Uh, we're hearing uh, disturbing information out of Memphis when we look at uh, police brutality, as it were, uh, involving uh, Mr. Nichols and the Memphis Police Department. When we think about Memphis, Tennessee, and the latest information, uh, what goes through your mind? Well, you know, James, uh, you know, just like many others, uh, my reaction is very um, uh, heartening. Um, when we look at the uh, video and all of the other reports that are coming out of Memphis, Tennessee, uh, I have to be very honest with you. I couldn't get past probably maybe 45, maybe 60 seconds um, of the video, and I just could not watch it anymore. I just, as a Black man, um, I just could not take it anymore. Uh, as a man who has uh, three, uh, two grown sons, um, two grandsons, um, I put myself in those situations when these type of incidents continue to happen in our community and no one, no one deserved, no one deserved uh, that kind of uh, beating uh, and that kind of um, punishment for what is alleged to believe uh, as a traffic stop. Mr. Harvey, when we look at the perspectives, if you will, from the NAACP over the years, always there as a pillar uh, to do the right thing, so to speak, and to share that with uh, the greater uh, community, if you will, and citizens across this nation, and, and definitely with the scales of justice. But just talk a little bit about the perspective from the NAACP and why that's very important anytime you have uh, people who aren't treated accordingly. Well, you know, that's really the essence of why the NAACP is still around because of these kinds of issues. Um, to be that advocate, to be that voice for those who don't have an advocate and for those that are voiceless. It's our responsibility as the NAACP across our country to stand in the gap and fight for public, public policy uh, changes when we have these kinds of incidents continuing to occur. We've been on the forefront since the right uh, since the uh, George Floyd. Well, actually, since the Rodney King incident as, as well, but especially since the George Floyd incident, we're really trying to advocate and push for police reform. We need police reform now. Just because these gentlemen was black does not mean that there is not a culture within our police department that does not need to be changed. Actually, by them being black, it's evident that police reform needs to happen and it needs to happen now. The concept uh, of body cams, if you will, and having footage that we can all look at and, and record live interactions, how important are body cams as we move forward? And in particular, when we look at the Memphis case of Mr. Nichols. Well, you know, the NAACP, along with many other grassroots organizations, was on the forefront of pushing for our law enforcement agencies across this country uh, to have body cams. Our local agency in Sarasota, Sarasota Police Department, wears body cams. And I am a big proponent for body cams. I know that there's different opinions out there about body cams invading someone's, uh, you know, privacy rights and, and things like that. But I, I am the belief by body cams, body cams actually protects everybody. It protects the victim. And then it also protects law enforcement. If law enforcement is on the up and up, it's going to show that they were by the books. They crossed all the T's, they dotted all the I's. And then the video is for the victim. It's going to show, show whether they were in compliance or not in compliance. So I think it holds everybody accountable. And for these officers not to recognize that, is really disappointing um, because if it would have not have been for the body cameras, we probably would have not have had a clear picture of what happened to Mr. Nichols uh, uh, that evening. 
Mr. Harvey, when we look at uh, the totality, if you will, of, of brutality and, and interactions over the years, um, just talk a little bit about this episode as it relates to, you cited the Rodney King case back in the 90s in California. Uh, we just witnessed uh, George Floyd out of Mi Minneapolis. Um, how challenging is it to uh, see something like this? And uh, they might say something like, uh, here we go again. How challenging is it to see another episode? And this time, there are six families whose lives have changed forever, and they happen to be uh, black men and black families. You know, you know, you know, James, it's, it's, it's very, it's very challenging when these kinds of issues happen because you almost get, you almost get numb, and you almost get speechless. You know, because when I'm having conversations with you know, my 28 year old son and my 35 year old uh, son and my 11 year old and my eight year old grandson. And I'm having those conversations with them. Sometimes I'm lost for words because I really I don't know what to say, you know, um, and um, and that makes it tough. You know, as a black man, you know, in this country uh, who is trying to raise upstanding, uh, you know, young black men, and then they continue to perpetually see these kinds of incidents happen in, in, in their very front eyes, it's, it's heartening to try, it's heartening to try to figure out how to respond, um, you know, to them. So it is very, very challenging when we have these kinds of situations. When you look at news out of Memphis, uh, what would you like to share with people here on the Sun Coast, whether they're based in Manatee or in Sarasota County, and they're looking uh, at Memphis, and maybe they don't like what they see. It can't speak for them. But when you think about this episode, what information would you share with people on the Sun Coast? You know, I would just share is, um, you know, be prepared if you're going to look at the video, be prepared for the psychological uh, and mental trauma that you may go through uh, and find someone that you can talk to uh, and release uh, your, your, your frustration and your sadness out. And then well, whatever reactions that we do on the Sun Coast, let's do it in decent uh, and in order. Let's do it in peace. Let's talk to one another. Let's console one another. Let's be there for one another. Uh, and let's ultimately pray for one another um, that we get past this. In Sarasota, locally in the Newtown community, there's been interaction and meetings, if you will, between local law enforcement and concerned citizens. How special is it to keep a dialogue, if you will, uh, flowing where there's interaction and, and there's information uh, going across back and forth? Well, you know, it's important that we continue to have effective collaborations and partnerships with our law enforcement officers uh, and agencies. And I think that's one of the things that we have actually done pretty decent uh, in Sarasota is to always continue to have that open dialogue and be at the table. To be at the table enough that when law enforcement is wrong, we can hold them accountable um, uh, to, 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 their, to their actions. But yet we can still be at the table to say, OK, how do we fix this? Um, what policies that needs to be changed, what other kind of interactions that need to be changed, and then how we're able to move the community forward. So we have to always be, you know, we have to look at, you know, because many look at the law enforcement as our enemy. Law enforcement is not in our enemy because if we didn't have law enforcement in our communities, our communities will be in an uproar. But that doesn't mean every single agency operates by the book. So when they don't operate by the book, we call them out on it. We, we do what we need to do to affect that change and how do we can move the community forward. In closing, uh, there's an event in Orlando uh, with regard to the NAACP. Could you share just a little bit about that experience with the audience and what you're finding and what you're seeing uh, in Orlando? Well, you know, this is our first meeting of the year to basically set out the agenda uh, for the state. Uh, our chairman of the board, Leon Russell, uh, national chairman of the board was here. Uh, our, obviously our state president, Adora Obi uh, Nuizi uh, was here uh, facilitating uh, today's uh, meeting. And again, the, the, the Mr. Nichols situation came up, the DeSantis 
uh, with the AP situation, all of that stuff came up to begin to start mobilizing us as a state um, organization on how do we combat some of these issues that we are facing within our uh, community. So we're going to be coming back with some marching orders, um, and um, you know we're going to continue to try to try to try to lead our community as best as we can. Well, folks, there you have it from Mr. Trevor Harvey. He is the president of the NAACP, the branch out of uh, Sarasota here on the Sun Coast. I'm James Hill. You're watching ABC7, your local station.